Today we'll talk about the second Wannemannian cycle. This is Runos 16 through 25. And uh, this is very a long, a long cycle. There are shorter cycles, but this is, this is quite long. A lot of things happen. And let's uh, start from 16, where Wannemannian Vanem um, starts building a boat. And we are not told why he needs to build the boat, but, it, but that'll become clear uh, in the course of the cycle. So, um, so in order to build the boat, uh, Vanamonen needs help. And, uh, and who appears here is the tiny little helper, the field's son, tiny boy Samsa. So we have Samsa Pellervoinen appearing again. He was the one who appeared also when Vanaman needed to clear the fields when after the, um, the world was created. So Bellervon and the fields, some tiny boy Samsa, uh, so he uh, shows up and uh, he is he it is who will seek wood, go after oak for Vanaman and boat. The, uh, for the singer's keel. So Vanaman needs, of course, in order to build a boat, he needs he needs uh, trees, and that's when you get some sort of Bellevon helping helping him. Uh, comes to Samsa goes to an aspen tree, and here we have again we have the talking trees. The aspen uh, speaks up and it finds its tongue. What man do you wish of me? What anyway do you want? Uh, the aspen does not want to be uh, cut down, obviously, for Vanamonen's boat. So Pellervoinen uh, says, this is what I wish of you. This is what I seek and want, a boat for Vanamonen, some craft for wood for the singer. And Aspen continues speaking, uh, that I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm no good for a boat boat building uh, mission, full of leaks, a boat from me and a craft likely to sink. I am hollow at the base. Three times this summer the maggot has eaten my heart. The worm has laid my root. So I'm, I'm like a rotten tree, so don't try to build a boat of me. And uh, okay, so uh, Samsa Pellervonen goes further, comes to a pine offer a uh, tree that is six fathoms high high of height fathom something like this depends on the person's uh, you know length of arms how, how long it is but so it's it's relatively high not all that high but so uh, Samsa starts cutting down the pine or fir tree, and the fir tree starts speaking again with got these speaking trees. Not from me will a craft come, one that bears six ribs. I am a gnarled fir. Three times this summer the raven croaked at my top. Uh, the crow has caught on my bows. So some says, okay, if you are a bad uh, tree for building a boat and I leave you alone. Goes to the third one again. We have this cycle of three things and uh, he, he goes to the southern worlds and he came up on an oak uh, of nine fathoms girth or nine fathoms girth. <laughs> so that's a big oak and, um, and the oak speaks again skillfully answered and the acorn, acorn tree managed Indeed, there is wood in me for one small boat, uh, boat's hull, for I am no gnarled bean pole, nor am I hollow inside. So I'm a, I'm a good tree. So the oak uh, tree sacrifices itself for Vanaman and boat. And that's when Vanaman starts using that, uh, that uh, oak tree in order to build his boat. And everything goes okay. But then, all of a sudden, 
Vladimir realizes that uh, he doesn't have the words to finish building the boat. Uh, he needed three words for putting on the handrails, for raising the prow, uh, rounding off the stern. Steady old Vainamon and the everlasting wise man uttered a word and spoke thus, Woe, luckless me, for my days the boat did not reach waters, the new ship, the waves. So he's like, what am I going to do? I need these words. Of course, um, Woody, how he has been building this, uh, this uh, boat of the old tree. He's been singing things. He's a singer, he's not like, you know, the boat maker uh, in the, the traditional sense. So he sings things into being. He sang one tail, fixed the keel, he sang two, joined on the side, joined on, on a side. Soon he sang a third as well, and and everything is going fine until he realizes that it's not quite done, he needs three words. And he doesn't know what to do, so uh, so he thinks, considers where to get the words from, fetch the right spells from, the scalps of swallows, the heads of a flight of swans, from the skin of geese shoulders. He set off to get some words. He ruined a flock of swans, a gaggle of geese, destroyed no end of swallows but he got no word at all. So he's, he's doing these bad things to nature, um, to animals to get get the words, but it doesn't it doesn't work. So uh, he hears that there is this mysterious giant in Tuonela, again the land of the death who has who is keeping words in himself inside himself who who can be the source of the words that Vainamonen needs to finish his boat and we'll find out why that boat is important for him to finish so um, he set off to get some words take some mysteries, he cut a field of reindeer open, a big beanful of squirrels, he continues to destroy uh, animals in order to get words, everything's useless. Um, he thinks, considered, there I'll get a hundred words from Tuonela's dwelling from the dead land's ageless abode. So he, he decides to go to Tuonela to get these, these words. Um, for the boat building. And of course you're not supposed to go to Tuonela unless you are dead. Tuonela is the place for the dead and Vanamenen is not dead but he goes there for his selfish reasons so to say. And the first person he meets there is the stunted girl of Tuoni, a small girl um, of Tuoni, a squat maid of the dead land. Um, she was doing some laundry there, pounding her laundry in Tuonis Black River. Remember the river in which Lemminkainen, um, Lemminkainen species pieces were thrown into, and, and his mother had to help him. So, um, so Lemminkainen doesn't meet like Saint Peter at the at the gates to to uh, heaven. Oh, uh, so he, he he meets this little girl. Tuonis uh, girl, and um, and the girl wants to know what Vainamonen is doing there. So the same questioning <laughs> happens. Uh, if the reason is stated, what led you to to death? Killed by no disease, taken by no natural causes, shattered by no other doom. So he asks, what 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 are you doing here? You don't seem to be injured or or burned or drowned or uh, or killed in war or whatever. So Vanaman starts this this long list of lies because what he's doing is he's kind of like crossing a boundary that he is not supposed to be crossing as a living person. He's not supposed to go to the to the land of the death, but there he is. 
and he needs to answer, so he lies. He said, Tuoni brought me here and death dragged me from my lands. But, uh, but the girl is a smart one and she said, now I have spotted a fraud. Tuoni would have brought you when he came. Death, when he traveled with Tuoni's hood over you, over your head, death smitten on your hand, Say truly, Vainamönen, what led you to death? And uh, Vainamönen continues to lie. Iron has led me to death. Steel snatched me to Tuonela, so I was killed by, uh, by a sword or by an axe or some kind of an iron weapon. And uh, the girl is no fool. She said, there I recognize a fraud. If iron got you to death, Steel brought you to Tuonela. Your clothes would be pouring blood, would be gushing gore. Well, that happened when Vanamönen had, uh, had uh, hit himself with an axe when he was building that boat for, small boat for the girl, a uh, North, North Farm girl, um, whom he looked up to when he was not supposed to lift his head. Uh, so that's when he almost died, but he hasn't, that was healed, uh, a complicated healing, uh, the healing cer ceremony, but he was healed from that, so he's not gushing blood right now, and that's why he must be lying. And uh, so the girl uh, says, say truly, Vainamoin, and say truly the second time. Of course, we have another... Uh, round of lies. So Vainamönen says, water has got me to Tuonela, the below to, uh, to Tuonela. The girl says, I can see a liar. If water got you to, to death, the below to Tuonela, your clothes would, be pour, would pour water, your hems would be dripping. Tell the truth with care what led you to death. Uh, again, uh, Vainamönen continues his lies. He says, fire brought me to Tuonela, flame led me to death. So what you notice here is the same element. So you've got, you've got iron, uh, you've got, you've got uh, water, you've got, uh, you've got iron, you've got um, fire, you've got water. And uh, these are useful elements for humankind, but they can also kill you, and Vanaman and tries uh, all of these. And so fire brought me to Tuonela. And uh, the girl just says, I can guess a liar won't work with me if you want that, but then um, Vanaman needs a boat in order to, to go, actually go to Tuonela, to cross the, the Black River. Uh, to uh, the Tuoni River to get to Tuonela. And um, if you want a boat from here, tell the truth with care and have done with lies. So the girl is a gatekeeper, so to say, and Vanaman tries to, you know, tell all these lies to get the boat. And he, he goes uh, actually on, and after these four lies, he tells the truth. If I did lie a little, was a fraud the second time. Now I'll tell the truth. I was building a boat with wisdom, making a craft with singing. I sang one day, I sang two, till on the third day the po poem sledge smashed. The phrase runner snapped. I've come to Tuonela for a spike, to the dead land for a drill, to build my sledge, with the sledge with to make my song slay. Now bring a little boat here, make ready your, your raft for me to get me over the strait, reach me across the river. So now he tells the truth that he came uh, to, to get the ingredients to finish his boat and um, he is they point out to him that you are a fool for coming here uh, because you didn't have to come because you are not dead. Fool for your folly man, for your madness. 
you come without cause to Tuonela, undeceased to death's abodes. Better it would be for you to return to your own lands. Plenty have come here, but not many have returned. And this is something that gets repeated. Plenty have come here, but not many have returned. And uh, Vanaman just says, no, it's just, you know, old women who turn from the road. Uh, I am not going to turn from the road. I have a mission. I am going to accomplish my mission, no matter what you tell me. And uh, woe to you, Vainamoon, and says the tawny girl, you have come unslain to death, still alive to Tuonela. So he has crossed the, crossed the barrier uh, without the license to cross the barrier. And, uh, and he gets there, and the, the uh, mistress, dead lamp daughter, old woman, brought her flagon for her this uh, this drinking uh, vessel fetched uh, some in a two uh, fetched some in a two handle one, and she puts it into words. Dress a uh, dr uh, drink drink up, old Vainamoinen, uh, offering this to him. And uh, so he looks into the cup, and it's gross. Uh, this uh, this uh, cup, this flagon. Uh, there, the, the frogs spawning within worms on the sides, clustering will meet this kind of an image uh, later on in the next cycle as well. And he says, I'm not going to be drinking uh, from that, that, kind of, uh, that kind of a drink. Uh, beer drinkers get drunk, guzzlers of the jug fall down, so he's saying, oh, I'm like, you know, a teetotaler, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to touch that, that drink. And um, that was the drink of the dead land. And he says, as I was, he tells, he tells actually now the truth uh, directly to the mistress of Tuona. As I was carving a boat, was working on a new craft, I needed three words to round off the stern and to raise the prow. And the mistress says, uh, Duoni gives no words, death does not share power. But um, then, uh, then uh, Vanaman meets a hag, an old woman, in Tuonela was a hag, an old hag of pointed chin, a, a, a spinner of iron yarn, and, uh, and uh, then there's an old man, in Tuonela was a man, an old man with three fingers, interesting details here. Uh, Tuoni's son is there, uh, Tuoni's son of hooked uh, finger, of hooked finger, iron, iron tip. He drew the hundred mesh saying across Tuonela River. So they make a trap for they say, you need to, you need to leave. Uh, there are no words for you. Tuoni doesn't give uh, words. You won't get away from here ever in this land to go to your home, to crawl to your lands. And, um, and how is Vanamon and Getting to uh, getting to go to where he needs to go, um, so Tuoni's son it puts this trap uh, to block Vainamoinen and from uh, getting there. Uh, he drew a hundred mesh saying across Tuonela's river from across it and along and toward it to to stop Vainamoinen and getting out. The man of calm waters free ever in this world. Not in a month of Sundays. I love this. Not in a month, month of Sundays, an impossible thing. From Tuonela's dwellings, from the deadlands, ageless abodes. So, Vainamonen uh, utters words and speaks. Could my ruin have come? My day of trouble have arrived in these Tuonela cabins, these abodes of the dead land. And he shifts shape. So he, he changed his shape, promptly became something else, 
went as something black to see, as an otter to the sedge, she crawled as an iron worm, moved as a viperish snake across Tuonela's river and through Tuoni's netting, Tuoni's son's hooked, uh, son of hooked finger, of hooked finger, iron tipped, walked early in the morning to look at his nets. He has a hundred suin and a thousand fry, but he has not caught Vainamoinen, the old man <coughs> of calm waters. So uh, there uh, Vainamoinen managed to kind of trick uh, the Tuoni people by his shape-shifting and um, and uh, the old man, and when he came to Tuonela, he says with this word, he spoke with, uh, with this speech, May the good God, not may he not bring this about, he who himself went to death, penetrated Tuonela. Plenty have got there, few have come from there. And there he is now. He has managed to cross that river, and um, and he is um, he is now looking for those words. And we come to the seventeenth runa, uh, which is entitled "Inside the Giant." And this has some uh, some intertextual references, obviously, to the story of Jonah in the, the Old Testament who ended up in the stomach of the whale. So Vainamon uh, and he got away from the death, uh, but he still has no words. Uh, the boat needs to be finished and he needs these words. He meets a herdsman. So he has gotten out of, out of, out of Tuonela even though he Back to get there because he thought he's going to find the words there, and he doesn't know now. He's, he's gotten out from there by tricking, tricking the Tuonela people. So he meets a herdsman. Very often, herdsmen are mentioned. They they are not mentioned by necessarily by their names, but but um, if this is somehow reminiscent uh, to what, like in the saga of the Volsungs, for instance, there is Odin often in the shape of an old wise man. And these herdsmen are often that appear here and there. They are these wise men. And uh, he meets, uh, so Vanemone meets, uh, having uh, escaped from, from Tuonela alive, few have, uh, uh, many have gone, plenty have gone there, but few have escaped. So he meets a herdsman who put this in words. You will get a hundred words and a thousand tail charms from Antero Vipunen's mouth, fr from the word hoarder's belly. So the giant is, has a name, it is Antero Vipunen. It's this uh, strange dead a giant, so he is, he is dead, uh, but he's got the words, he's a word hoarder, and he's got all those words inside him, and, and we can hear, we can see the, the power of language, the power of words, again, which I keep repeating that, that the, the, the words are seen as something that a knowledgeable person stores uh, as concrete things and a good user of words takes these words and puts them in use in order to get things done, to heal, to curse, to build a boat like Vainamon is trying to do. So Antero Vipunen is this weird, weird dead giant and, um, and uh, so uh, the, the herdsman tells Vainamon and you need to find the Vipunen and get the, get the words from his mouth and from his belly. But he has to be gone to and the track picked out. It is not a good journey, but not quite the worst either. And Vainamon of course has been on a bad journey already here. 
So uh, at first you must run up on women's needle points, the next you must walk on a man's sword tips, and third you must assemble on a uh, you must amble on a fellow's hatchet blades. So sharp objects, and you need to you need to cross those. Now what is Vanaman going to do? He's a big man. Can he? How can he walk without hurting himself on needles and sword tips and hatchet blades? So he goes to his friend Ilmarinen and uh, says, uh, "You know, help me, help me out." So, or he tells him to help me out. Smith Ilmarinen forge iron footwear, forge iron gauntlets to make uh, make an iron shirt, prepare an iron coal uh, staff. Obtain one of steel, but steel at its core and on top draw soft iron. So um, I'm going to need, uh, I'm off to get some words, take some mysteries from the word hoarder, Peri Antero Vipunen's mouth. And Smith Ilmarinen, Vainamonen's buddy, neighbor, is this sensible person, practical person. He says, Vipunen has been long dead. So how are you going to be getting words from him? Uh, but uh, and says don't go. Um, so he has Antero for ages has vanished, left the trap he'd set, the path he baited. From there you will get no word, no, not even half a word. How can you get words from a dead person? Ilmarinen's notion, but Vanaman still went did not heed. <laughs> so for one day he stepped clinking up on women's needle points, uh, for two he rambled along up on men's sword tips, for a third two he ambled on a fellow's hatchet blades. Because um, Ilmarinen had made these, you know, these, uh, uh, these uh, devices, footwear and gauntlets, and, and so that Vainamonen didn't hurt himself by doing it. Again, you know, three things uh, that Van Manen needed to, to accomplish in order to get to Antero Vipunen, in order to get these words then from, or we'll see if he gets the words. <laughs> so, so uh, Vipunen uh, and Antero Vipunen, he, he full of tales, old man, word hoarder, he lulls with his tales, with his spells, he sprawls, and he's got this vegetation growing from him. Uh, trees on his eyebrows and chin and mouth and and uh, everywhere, and uh, it, because he's is dead, so he's like you know in the state of decay, decay in, in a in a sense that you know. Oh, vegetation is growing from him. And uh, so Vanaman comes there, uh, he, there and he just draws his sword and he starts cutting the, the vegetation from on top of uh, Antara Vipunen. Now think of a giant so big that, you know, trees are growing and <laughs> growing from his face. And uh, Vanaman is like, he's like, Gulliver in the land of the giants, so uh, except there's only one giant here. So he clears the trees and he sticks his sword into Vipunen's mouth uh, so that he can get the mouth open and he says, rise up, surf of man, from where you lie underground from the long sleep you are taking. And so Vipunen has been has been dead, sleeping in bed for death uh, forever. And uh, so he he's, he's startled from his sleep when you know Vanamonen. Now think of a Lilliputian kind of a person. Now Vanamonen, his real size is is very small compared to uh, the giant Vipunen, and and uh, so. So he wakes, the Vanaman wakes, wakes up Vipunen uh, because he's, you know, poking him and, uh, 
and uh, so Vipunen felt the one touching hard and with pain the one teasing he bit the iron cow staff he bit off the soft iron but he could not bite the steel could not eat the iron core and uh, so Vanamon and his stumbles all of a sudden Vanamon and stumbles into Vipunen's mouth and uh, and uh, Vipunen swallows Väinämöinen uh, with his sword into his throat, gulped old Väinämöinen. So it's like, you know, Jonah and the whale in the Old Testament, similar kind of a thing. So there's, there's Vipunen full of tales and he says, I have eaten this and I have eaten that, but I've never eaten something that I now accidentally ate. A morsel that tastes like this. Vanaman is inside him now, and he's like, my ruin could be coming, my day of trouble looming in this slayer of a demon, this ingle nook of the grave. And he's like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna, how am I gonna, a survive here in the belly of this giant and at second my mission is to get the words how am i going to get the words so he built a smith builds a smithy there he is, he's a magician of sorts and uh, and he builds a smithy in the belly of the giant and uh and uh, Vipunen feels that something's going on in his intestines. Vanamonen is like hammering away, he tap taps away, hammered all night without rest, all day uh, rest, all day without a breather. And the word ho in the word hoarder's belly, the eloquent one's bosom. And uh, so Vipunen says, what kind of a man may you be? What sort of fellow? I have eaten a hundred fellows, destroyed a thousand men, but I don't think I've eaten such. Coal is coming from my, from uh, coming into my mouth. A fire brands on my onto my tongue. Iron drops in my throat. So. Um, Vanamonen is has built this smithy through his magic. Uh, in uh, in uh, in Antero Vipunen's stomach intestines, and he's, he's hammering, tap tapping away there. And uh, now this uh, is causes huge distress to uh, Antero Vipunen. So he he, he says first, uh, you know, kind of like, I'm going to tell your mother what you're doing. If I tell your mother, speak, report to your parent, you to. Your parent, mother has more work, great trouble the parent has when her son does wrong, her child misbehaves. So it's kind of funny that uh, that Vanamon is this old, steady uh, Vanamon, and, and now he is uh, a Vipunen who is older and steadier and much bigger. Uh, is telling him that I'm going to tell your mother if you don't stop what you're doing inside my stomach. And this leads to a very long uh, kind of lamentation by Vipunen of how, uh, it, because it's hurting in his belly that that uh, Vanamonen is using his smithy, his uh, smith's uh, workshop inside him there. And, uh, and he's like, where do you come from? Do you come from from here where some problems come on, or from there where other problems come. So tell me, where do you come from? Uh, and this is on pages 204 and 205. From, from their problems used to spring, from their plights arose, from the haunts of men who know, the pastures of singing men, homes uh, of, of scoundrels, and um, uh, is it from the forest, from the swamps, from uh, the crumbling soils? Is it from uh, from a bare, craggy cell, from the furthest north, from Lapland's vastness? So he lists all these places where troubles uh, 
known troubles come from? Is that, is that where you too sprang from and where plight calls the animal and uh, plight you arose from to enter my guiltless heart, my blameless belly, to eat and to gnaw, <coughs> to bite and uh, to devour? And he continues, and he tells uh, this pain <coughs> to stop. And this looks like uh, this very, very long lamentation, but it has the purpose, what Elias Lundbrook was doing, he was using uh, Antero Vipunen as a, uh, <coughs> as a, as a storage uh, source for these old lamentations, because people get, uh, get ill. Today we, we take like an aspirin, but in that world you kind of have to, have to figure out what could heal your pain. Now he has this pain in his stomach. And he, he starts uh, asking for help. Um, oh forest with your men, come and help me. Oh water, come help me. Water mistress, come and help me. Nature's girl, come and help me. And fourth thing, finally, but it, but should it not heed, not give way even a bit, old man at the pole of heaven, at the thundercloud's edges, come here when you are needed, make your way when you are asked. So you ask for like this nature uh, remedies, you know, herbs from the forest, uh, water is said, which is said to be the the best of healers, nature's girl, uh, natural natural methods of healing, and then finally God is turned uh, turned to. Uh, except this is a pagan god. This is old man at the pole of heaven at the thunder clouds edges on page two hundred and seven, and this of course is a reference to Ukko which is the thunder god. Uh, so it's uh, Germanic, this is the finno ugric god, and its Germanic counterpart would be Thor. And of course from Thor we get thunder, the thunder god, the god of heavens, the main, uh, you know, one of the main gods. And then Ukko in Finnish, the word for thunder is uh, ukkonen, comes directly from ukko with a nominative ending there uh, at, the, at the end of the word, nominative suffix. So, um, so first you ask forest and water and nature, and then uh, finally ask uh, ukko, the old man. And uh, Vainamon, uh, Vipunen, Antero Vipunen, the giant, dead giant, continues his, uh, his, his chance to make this pain go away. And, uh, and, and uh, it, it, he, there, there's this one place on page 208, uh, Go to, go to pain, go to where you came from, go to your own uh, mistresses, your own master's house. And uh, he says, gouge out the master's eye and smash the mistress's head. So, uh, so the pain is told to go away and you know, do these bad things in, in the place where he came from. It reminds us of Egil, how Egil once went and gouged by, by the eye out of the out of the the host of the house where he was staying on his on his trips. Um, this continues. If little should come out of that, then do this and uh, and. And if this is a disease, which is interesting, if it's a windborne disease, like in the pandemic, of course, we are very, uh, kind of grown very conscious about the windborne disease, 
water-driven uh, diseases and so on. So uh, if you're a windborne disease, windborne water-driven, shared out by the gale, carried by chill air, go by the wind's way, by the gale sledge track without sitting in a tree or resting on an alder, go to, you know, where you came from basically. And uh, if it's water uh, disease, then, you know, maybe it's in the water and, uh, and go away, go away. So he, he gives these chants uh, and I, I will banish you to the furthest north to Lapland's vastness. And again, should you not get a place there, yonder I will banish you to Tuonis Black River, to the dead lands eternal brook. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, shamanistic um, uh, lamentation or chant to get the pain uh, to go away. So this goes on for multiple pages, Antara Vipunen's chance to get the uh, pain caused by Vainamönen to stop. And Vainamönen finally speaks on page 213 and, and he says, it is good for me to be here. So he threatens to stay. And of course he hasn't yet presented why he has come to Antara Vipunen. Uh, why he even is there. And uh, so the Vipunen, uh, a full of tales, the old word hoarder with great wisdom in his mouth, boundless might in, might in his bosom, opened his word chest and flung wide his box of tales. So uh, th there are these, uh, these th there's this concrete box where he keeps his tales and he, uh, he gets out of the best uh, things forth those deep origin spells about the beginning. And uh, there uh, Vipunen's full, Vipunen full of tales in the Tsar showed what he knew. So, uh, so after Vanaman is like, I'm gonna stay here in your stomach forever, uh, but um, but then he says, unless I come to hear words and fetch the right spells and hear enough words and a thousand charms, words shall not be hid nor spells be buried. Might shall not, might shall not sink underground though the mighty go. So this is interesting in the sense that, you know, what Elias Lenroth is doing, he's collecting all these stories, these oral stories that are really, really ancient. And, of course, they, are, they have been told from one generation to another uh, by, by uh, older people to younger people and again to the next generation. And people go under the ground, they die and are buried but the words should not go under the ground and keep, uh, stay buried. So this is uh, more of a kind of symbolic meaning uh, from Lenroth's point of view about the entire project of the Kalevala that he's collecting all these words before, from old people basically, before they die, so that they would not take them under the ground in their, in their in their bellies, so to say. And so, uh, so Vipunen uh, gives these words, these, these uh, chants, these spells, and of course, uh, before, before he even knows why Vanamunen is there, there's this example of this lengthy, lengthy uh, chant by Vipunen about how to, how to throw away the pain. And we saw another example of that when the old man was doing all his shamanistic uh, chants when Vainamönen's knee is gushing blood. So, so we have these, these examples of how words can heal, how words can, can be, be used 
to build boats. And, uh, and the, this runo ends uh, on page 216. Uh, steady old Wainamoinen put this into words. Now I've got a hundred words and thousands of charms. I have brought the words out of hiding unburied the spells. And he goes to his boat and he finishes it up and uh, with, with the words that he now has. So uh, in the next, uh, next runo uh, entitled The Rival, Rivals, we find out why Vanaman wants to build this boat. And the reason why he wants to build the boat is that he needs to go back to the Northland farm because all this time, nothing has been really said about the fact that Vanamonen uh, didn't manage to get the, get the wife from the Northland farm, whom his mother asked him to, told him to go and go and get a wife from there, since you know, your, your, uh, your attempts to get Aino didn't work out, Aino killed herself. So rather than marry you. So, uh, so he had gone to the Northland farm to try to get the woman, uh, the, the girl, one of the girls, uh, to marry him. And he had tried to woo that girl by doing his, his magic things. The girl gave him these challenges. And yet what happened is when Vanamana was carving a boat for her, that she asked her to do as the third challenge, Vanamon and hurt his knee and had to go and look for uh, a remedy for it. So in 18, a steady old Vanamon and thought and considered going to woo the maiden to look up the braided head out in dark Northland in dreary Savio cinnamon for Northland. The famous girl of the North, the special bride of the North. That's what he needed his boat for. And before he leaves, at the bottom of page 217, he prays to God, come now into the craft, God, in the, west, in the vessel merciful, to be a small fellow's strength and a little man's manhood, on those wide waters, up on those vast waves. He had to cross this, this huge water in order to get to the north, and so he knows that there, there are dangers, so he's praying, praying to God that the winds will be calm and the water will be calm. So he starts uh, with, his, with his boat toward uh, Northland, to get that girl that he's been, you know, secretly obsessed by. Uh, but of course, this wouldn't be a good story if things worked out very well and easily for him. Uh, so he's, he's rowing, he's rowing or uh, it, sailing in his boat. It doesn't specify whether it's a sailboat or a rowboat, but anyway, he's, he's, uh, he's on the water going in his boat and um, and then we are like shifted to this woman who sees that there's a man rowing out there <coughs> on the water, and the woman is I mean it, Anniki is another Anniki, another sister of another man. Annik is the sister of Ilmarinen. Uh, Ilmarinen uh, is also the one who, who was promised the same woman, the same girl as a wife. And so now uh, Vainamarinen is on his way to the north to get this woman, to, to uh, propose to, to the woman. And Anniki sees Vainamon going, and Anniki is Ilmarinen's sister. And Anniki, uh, and Vainamon is kind of, you know, he, he stops there on his way to the north 
when he sees Anniki because he wants to chat with Anniki. And, uh, and Anniki sees this boat, uh, Vainamönen comes, he thinks it's this, it's that, it's, uh, it, it was Vainamönen. So uh, the boat rolls near, page 219, the boat rolls near and the new craft sails past the misty headlands tip, past the foggy islands end, Anniki, she of good name, um, now saw it was a boat coming, a hundred planked one tacking, she uttered a word, if you are my brother's boat or perhaps my father's craft, wend your way homeward. But it wasn't, it was, it was Vainamöen approaching, and Anniki is referred to as she of good fame. Anniki is Ilmarinen's sister. And Vainamöen comes there and says, hi, um, how are you? And Anniki says, where are you off to, Vainamöen, and heading for bridegroom of calm waters, and where land of cho choice making for? So Vainamön starts lying again. Of, he's not going to tell Anniki that I'm going to go and you know try again in the north if I can get the woman this time. And uh, and Jesus, I I'm off to hunt salmon. Vainamön is a is a he's a he's a liar. I'm off to hunt salmon to catch trout spawning. But Anniki, just like the uh, the the girl of Tuoni, the little maid of Tuoni. Uh, is, is a smart one and cannot be lied to. They detect lies in Vainamönen's lies immediately, both of them. And Anniki, she of good name, puts this into words. Don't tell empty lies, for I too know about fish, fish spawning. Anniki detects the lie immediately. He says, you know, if you, if you were going fishing, you would have nets on your boat and, and uh, traps and and uh, so on, and so don't try to tell me you're going fishing because you don't have any of the equipment there in your boat. Where are you off to Vainamönen? Um, <coughs> Vainamönen continues to lie. Uh, I am off in search of geese. Anniki again says, huh, no, I know one who speaks the truth. I can spot a fraud as well. My father went, you know, uh, shooting geese and, uh, you know, uh, hunting geese. And he had all this equipment um, and a dog, hunting dog with him. Uh, a handsome bow drawn, a black dog chained up, the chain bound so fast to the bow, the cur ran along shore roads, the pup scampered over the ro rocks. Tell the truth, Vainamönen, where after all are you bound? Vainamönen tells a third lie. And um, what if I tell I were going to those mighty wars? And Anniki said, <laughs> Just like, ha, 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 I know warmongering too, don't even try. I, you, don't, you don't have the gear to go warmongering. Tell, now tell me the truth without lying or fooling. Where are you off to Vainamön and heading for uh, calm waters, man? Uh, now what Vainamön uh, <laughs> doesn't still tell tell the truth, yet his, he starts to flirt with Anniki, probably has been flirting all this time, and starts to kind of like woo her. Come, girly, into my craft, made into my little boat, then I'll tell the truth without lying or fooling. So he asks Anniki to his boat in the same way as he had asked the maid of North, the girl who gave him all those tasks, he asked asked her to come to his sleigh. But uh, Anniki is, uh, is just rebuking, may the wind fall on your craft, the gale on your little boat. I will overturn your craft and topple your boat if I do not get to hear the truth where you, where you mean to go, to hear the truth told with care and the end of lies. Mm -hmm. So finally, Vanamönen tells the truth. He's like, okay, I will tell the truth. 
if I did lie a little, I am off to woo the maid to beg for the last out in the dark Northland in dreary Sariola, the man eating the fellow drowning place. So this is a scary place where I'm going, but I'm going to woo that northern Northland uh, Northland girl maiden. What is Anniki gonna do? Uh, she um, is gonna go and tattle to his brother Ilmarinen, who also was promised that same girl, who wanted to marry that same girl, but uh, after he built the sambo, he did not get his payment, and that payment would have been that that maid of Northland. So what, what we see here is Anniki goes and paddles to Ilmarin and his brother. Remember how an other Anniki, this is a different Anniki, an other Anniki who was Lemminkäinen's sister went and paddled to Lemminkäinen that Gulliki, Lemminkäinen's wife, had been visiting her friends. So we have these two tattlers, two Annikis who happen to have the same name. So Anniki goes and, okay, bye, have a good trip. And she turns around and she goes and tells his brother, Brother Smith Ilmarinen, oh everlasting craftsman, forge me a little shuttle, forge me some fine rings, two or three pairs of earrings, five or six belt chains, and I'll tell the truth without lying or fooling. So uh, she uses this situation in order to get his brother to uh, do all these beautiful things for her, uh, these trinkets that she wants. And Anniki uh, says, Smith Ilmarinen, uh, look, you think of marrying her who once you pledged with gifts set aside to be your wife. Um, now, Väinämöinen is going, going there to, to get him. Väinämöinen that is on his way on the blue high seas in the stern of gold prow with a paddle of copper bound for dark Northland for dreary Sariola. So, uh, Ilmarinen is struck by this. He has been kind of like mistreated by Vainamonen in a way because you remember Vainamonen tricked him to the Northland uh, to build the Sambo because he, he needed to promise that Sambo will be built for Lohi in the Northland uh, so that he can get back home and, uh, and then Vainamonen just you know tricked him. So a pain assailed the smith, a heavy moan, the blacksmith. Anniki, my dear sister, I will forge you a shuttle, I'll forge you some, some fine rings, and, uh, and if you get me ready to go, and, go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go there and not let Vanaman get this woman that I wanted. So what Anniki does is she warms up the sauna, the Finnish bath, and, uh, and, and scrubs his brother who is like totally covered with, uh, with dirt and soot. He's a smith and he's been working and working, uh, no, uh, no, nothing else in his life. So he's, he's washing the bridegroom's head um, and and you know his hair and and everything and uh, they put he was really really dirty so uh, he came in from the sauna came unrecognizable with his face mighty handsome with his cheeks flushing and he put this into words Ah Nikki my dear sister bring now a shirt of linen fetch hard wearing clothes and with them I'll get ready and fit to be a bridegroom. So Anniki brings a shirt of linen, breeches, stockings, German boots. <laughs> so well-fitting shoes, German boots. Um, so uh, we are in ancient Finland, but they, there was trading going on, as we know from you know the Viking stories. And uh, and makes him really handsome. I, I helps. I, I, Anniki helps him to 
to uh, dress up very well, and um, and and says uh, so. Ilmarinen says to his serf, uh, "Harness now a splendid foal before the bright sleigh for me to drive off, for me to go to Northland." And um, he's ready to go, but uh, there uh, is no snow. Uh, it's, it's interesting that at the same time as Vainamönen is taking his boat to the Northland, it seems that Ilmarinen is taking, taking a sledge uh, drawn by a, 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 a horse. So uh, there is no, uh, but of course, you know, these sorts of little, little details uh, don't let them worry, <laughs> worry you too much when you read the Kalevala. Uh, so uh, there is no snow. Uh, Ilmarinen prays, the everlasting craftsman man prays to the old man and uh, worships the thunderer. So he prays for uh, Ukko again. Old man drop new snow, fling down fine fresh snow, snow for the sleigh to slide on, fresh snow for the sledge to skim. And um, so Ilmarinen and Vainamönen uh, uh, end up getting there pretty much at the same time. And, um, and they meet there and uh, he runs into Vainamönen and uh, and he uh, startles Vainamon, and on the third day, of course, it's he, he drove one day, he drove two, soon he drives a third, till on the third day he startles Vainamon. And uh, Ilmarinen says, Old Vainamon. Uh, Ilmarinen knew why Vainamon was there. And I don't know what Vainamon thought when he saw that Ilmarinen is going there again, but it seems to be pretty obvious that they are. They are going to uh, try to get the same woman. Oh, Vainamönen, let us make a pact in case we compete in gifts, compete in wooing, not to take the maid by force, marry her against her will. So Ilmarinen proposes a pact. Now, uh, that was, um, in a way, a decent thing to do. Uh, to propose this pact, and, and Ilmarinen throughout this whole, whole, whole epic seems to be kind of like the reasonable, reasonable character, and um, and uh, of course it's also in Ilmarinen's favor. They're both going to ask this young maid to be the wife for them. Vainamönen is old. Ilmarinen is young and now he's well scrubbed and clean and nicely dressed. So uh, he compares probably himself to Vainamon and his chances. We can make this pact. And Vainamon says, I for one will make a pact. Yes, that's the honorable thing to do. Not to take the maid by force. Well, good for both of them. Marry her against her will. We have seen enough of that happening uh, in all our readings during this semester that women are married off against their will. Uh, to him the maid shall be given who takes her fancy without long yearning, without bearing a grudge for ages. So they, they make this pact, a decent pact. You know, let the woman choose which one she wants. And they get there, and the gray dogs, it, dog is barking, and people are kind of alerted. The master of Northland uh, says to a servant, "Go, girl, or, or to one of the girls there, just go, girl, and see why the gray dog was barking and flop ear yapping." And the girl says, um, "I have no time." Uh, the master of the Northland farm says to, to a hag, go and go and check, you know, why the why the dog is barking. And the hag says, I have no time, no intention. And asks his son uh, to do it, and uh, nobody is willing to do what the 
master of the Northland form asks them to do so. What does he do? He goes himself. He is portrayed as this man who doesn't have any authority. Remember his wife, Lo, he is the one who wears the pants in the family. So, so he goes and sees that there are these strangers here and and, and um, Vainamoinen and Ilmarinen are not really strangers because both of them have been there before. So, uh, so we have these two competing for the same girl. And who does uh, the girl's mother, Lohi, want? Is of course Vainamoinen because Vainamoinen is the famous one. He is, he is, um, he brings wealth by ship and treasures on board. The mother says, this is Lohi. He sa she says, that's the smith Ilmarin, and he brings empty lies, a sleigh full of spells. Wow. Uh, mother is uh, siding with Vanaman immediately. But uh, she still says, when they come indoors, bring mead in a flagon, fetch some of uh, some in a in a two-handled one, put the flagon in the hand of him you care to marry. So ultimately, even though the mother mother says Vainamoinen is the rich one, he's the famous one. He's, he's this other one is just the smith, um, but I'm letting you decide. So you put the drink in the hand of the one you want to marry. And what's going to happen? The girl brings, um, brings the, uh, the flagon and uh, gives it to the sheep she chooses Ilmarinen. Um, and uh, first, Vainamoinen Van proposes first, actually. Will you marry me, maiden, to be my friend forever, a lifelong mate on my knee, and a hen under my arm? And remember, if you call a woman a hen in the Kalevala, it means that flattering thing. So the fair girl of the north, she hastened to say, this is to Vainamoinen, have you carved the little bolt and have you built the big ship from the bits of my spindle, the pieces of my draw knife? Referring back to page 82 in our edition where that girl whom Vanaman lifted his head up to see against the instructions asked him to do one impossible task, second impossible task, a third impossible task when Vanaman Van hurt himself uh, working uh, and it was this boat. And Vanaman says, I have built a good ship too and carved a tough little boat that is steady in the wind and stable in bad weather. And, um, and uh, the girl says, I will not praise a sea man, a below sailing fellow. The wind tugs his mind at sea, his brains are cracked by the gale, nor yet can I come to you, cannot marry you, to be your friend forever and a hen under your arm, to lay out your bed, to place your pillow. And, um, and she chooses um, Ilmarinen, but it's not as simple because we are in, in this epic where you have to deserve something before you get it. As if Ilmarinen hadn't already deserved it. And uh, so now we get the vipers and beasts and pikes and we'll continue from that next time. Then we'll have a huge wedding at the north. Continue reading according to the syllabus and we'll talk about We'll finish talking about this, and we'll move on to um, to the second Lemminkainen cycle uh, and uh, the Kullero cycle, and then we'll continue and we'll get to the culmination of the the, the fight over the sample, which is 